All right guys, how you doing? So Nvidia has just launched their GTX 1060 graphics card, based of course on the Pascal architecture, which we've already seen with the GTX 1080 and 1070. With claims of GTX 980 beating performance at less power than AMD's RX 480, Nvidia are surely setting expectations very high. And now with a bunch of reviews done, we can see just how close to the mark that they came. So let's start by looking at the benchmarks. Right, so first up is Guru 3D. All the benchmarks I'm going to use are 1080p. The GTX 1060 is a 1080p card. If you're on a higher resolution, you're going to have to look at the GTX 1070, the GTX 1080. Now looking at the benchmarks, the 1060 appears to win some and lose some against both the GTX 980 and the RX 480. Overall though, it appears to slightly beat out the RX 480, while just falling slightly behind the GTX 980. And this is a pattern that we will see repeated throughout the reviews and benchmarks. For me, the interesting thing is Doom benchmark on OpenGL. Now, obviously Doom's been making headlines because of its Vulkan implementation, and yet many in the tech press still decided to bench using OpenGL. This is something I'm going to talk about later, but you'll soon see why this is an issue. And here is why. Over at TechSpot, they have benchmarked Doom on OpenGL and on Vulkan, and we can quite clearly see the massive swing, just as I had predicted in my last video. You've got the GTX 1060 leading by around 20% in OpenGL, which swings over to a 20% lead for the RX 480 on Vulkan. Away over at the left, in Overwatch, which is a very popular game, we do continue to see this large lead for the Nvidia cards. This is a big problem for AMD, and if Overwatch is your main game, and with over 10 million accounts, it is for very many people, then it's certainly worth considering the 1060 over the RX 480 simply for this. Otherwise, once again, we can see that the GTX 980 is just that little bit ahead of the 1060, which on average is once again just that little bit ahead of the RX 480. And we've got a similar story over at Tom's Hardware, except this time the RX 480 is even further behind. I don't really understand many of the game choices in this benchmark suite, but over at Tom's, the GTX 1060 had its biggest win overall against the RX 480. Now over at PC World, things start to even up a bit. I've included the best results for Hitman and also Ashes of the Singularity. Basically speaking, this is how it should be. In a game like Ashes, where Nvidia is slightly better at DX11, I've counted the DX11 score. And if AMD is better at DX12, I've counted the DX12 score. That's what seems to make most sense. It's the same with Hitman. The 1060 puts up a pretty decent fight against the GTX 980 here. And overall, at PC World, we saw the closest battle between the three cards. Moving over to Hexus, the GTX 980 continues to win, with the 1060 once again that little bit further ahead of the RX 480, except for the DirectX 12 games like Hitman, Total War Warhammer. Once again at Hexus, you've got Doom on OpenGL. Now, I've included the hard OCP benchmarks simply because they were one of the very few sites using Doom on Vulkan. With so many others benching Doom on OpenGL, I really felt that it had to be included because for me, this big loss for the 1060 is something that people need to know about before buying this card. Again, the 1060 suffers a pretty bad loss in Hitman and over at H, things are a little bit closer in Rise of the Tomb Raider and Witcher 3. In many game benchmarks over at Computer Base, they found the GTX 1060 was equal to the reference GTX 980 and 6% ahead of the RX 480. Over at Hardware Canucks, the 1060 won by 12% which is a pretty large lead in DX11 1080p. However, in DX12 1080p, it had a small loss of 3%. So with all of that coverage, just how much faster is the GTX 1060 compared to the RX 480? Well, here's your answer. Away over at the right, we can see the total of 5.7% faster over all of these benchmark sites. Only hard OCP found the AMD card faster, and the big lead over at Tom's Hardware came down to the curious game choices. Overall though, I would say that 6% looks about right, but for me, we need to take a closer look at how these numbers came about, because I do not remember a time when I have been less impressed by the tech press on a graphics card launch. I'm going to start with a simple one, Doom. Why did so many reviews include Doom with OpenGL and not Vulkan? Hardware Canucks, who have got a very nice looking benchmark suite otherwise, they benchmark all the DX12 games. This stuff is relevant to us. They've also included the DX12 totals at the end. They have included performance per dollar charts. And they have mentioned that in DX12, the wheels fall off the card. This is all relevant information. But these numbers of 12% and minus 3%, 
would look an awful lot different had the 1060 not had a 20% lead in Doom and instead had the 20% loss, which by now we know is the case under Vulcan. Hexus, Doom, once again around a 20% lead for the 1060 because they've tested using OpenGL. Guru 3D, OpenGL Doom and yet another lead for the 1060. I especially have an issue with Guru 3D because 8 days previously they benchmarked Doom on Vulcan. Now to be fair it wasn't all the cards that were benchmarked, however they clearly know what the story is here. And here's the thing, the OpenGL version of Doom is just bad news for everybody. We saw over at TechSpot that Nvidia does gain performance. Vulcan is just a win for everybody and for me this is probably a bigger story than the card itself. Looking over at Tom's Hardware benchmark suite, I just find this incredible that a website like Tom's Hardware can actually believe that this is acceptable. We have how many? 6 out of 9 games are Gameworks titles, they've included Project Cars, a game which is more famous for its notoriety with a completely unrealistic lead for the Nvidia cards, 51% faster than the RX 480, the benchmarked Hitman DX11 instead of DX12, and really old games like Battlefield 4 and Metro Last Light. The reviewer Chris Angelini has been in this business for a very long time and for me this points to a real issue when a reviewer of his supposed caliber can actually look at this benchmark suite and believe that this is what consumers need to know about. 3 year old games, DX11 Hitman, Project Cars. For me these guys are just not doing their job properly. So if you actually look at this 5.7% faster total, you can throw out the outliers like Tom's and Hard OCP, it brings it around about 5% but then you need to consider that Hardware Canucks, Hexus, Guru 3D have all included Doom on OpenGL instead of Vulcan, while TechSpot included both versions in the results. And what it realistically means is, there is very very little difference indeed between the GTX 1060 and the RX 480. The 1060 has a little bit of a lead overall, you can clearly see it in the benchmarks, but we are talking low single digit percentages. Generally speaking it wins more in older games, as you might expect it performs fairly well in Gameworks titles, but almost everywhere found the same story in DX12 with the RX 480 having a small lead in most of the titles. Right so that's performance, what about power consumption? Well over at Computer Base they tested power consumption during 4 games, Anno 2205, Fallout 4, Tomb Raider and Battlefront and here we can see that the GTX 1060 consumes even less power than the RX 480. So not only is it slightly faster, it is also more efficient. This isn't going to be a massive surprise because obviously Polaris 10, the RX 480 did disappoint in terms of power consumption. The 470 should however close this gap, but that said there is simply no denying it. AMD's supposedly low power card is not low power enough. 23% is not a massive gap. This isn't like for example your R9 390 versus your GTX 970, where for a while they had similar performance yet the GTX 970 had half the power draw. That's nothing like that here, we're much closer together and some people may be disappointed because if you look below the RX 480 we can see the GTX 1070 which only has 15% higher power draw but is clearly a much more powerful card than both the cards here. Simply put, the GTX 1070, your GTX 1080, this is the sweet spot of the Pascal architecture and Nvidia should be congratulated on a very power efficient architecture. With that said, we are talking 8GB of VRAM against 6GB of VRAM, but more importantly is a 256 bit memory bus on the RX 480. Memory buses do consume an awful lot of energy and the 192 bit memory bus on the GTX 1060 is one of the main reasons why the 1060 is so much more efficient, but it's all about trade-offs. This 192 bit memory bus and the 6 gigabytes of VRAM is one of the reasons why the RX 480 is likely to overtake the GTX 1060 in performance over the next year or two, especially when you consider that DX12 and Vulcan games will be the norm. Now we have been comparing reference cards, Nvidia's Founders Edition 1060 versus the reference RX 480, however custom versions will be available very soon. Over at Computer Base again, their Founders Edition card had an average boost around 1840 megahertz, which is quite a bit over the base. Their RX 480 on the other hand had an average of 1197 megahertz, so that's quite a gap in megahertz. What this really means is 
We know that Pascal can overclock to around 2050 megahertz. We're not entirely sure yet about the RX480, but if the custom cards reach 1400 megahertz, they are likely to be very, very close indeed in performance to a 2.05 or 2.1 gigahertz GTX 1060. So it's very well worth waiting on both. The simple fact of the matter is, this Founders Edition crap, I do not like it at all. You're paying an extra $50, apparently an extra $50, $299 for this card. If you purchase the Founders Edition, it is simply not worth it. It is nonsense. Hopefully, we will see $250 cards from NVIDIA's partners. And in the end, price is what it will come down to. NVIDIA has a small DX11 performance lead. AMD has a small DX12 and Vulcan lead. NVIDIA has slightly better power draw, but comes at a slightly higher price. For me, what this really comes down to is just how much is the AMD card going to gain in DirectX 12 and Vulkan over the next year or two. You already know what I think about this. And that's why I personally would go for the RX 480. I do not expect it to be another massive swing like we've seen with previous NVIDIA generations. I do, however, believe there will be a swing and the RX 480 will prove to be the better buy in the long run because of the next generation APIs like DX12 and Vulkan, because of the larger memory bus, but maybe more importantly, is actually the 8 gigabytes of RAM versus the 6 gigabytes. The simple fact of the matter is there are a lot of cards out there now with 8 gigabytes of VRAM as standard and there's going to be more in future as well as we move on to HBM2. AMD has a big incentive to add ultra options for 8 gigabytes of VRAM simply because the GTX 1060 will not be capable of doing it. Make no mistake about it, AMD will do this. Even though both cards can barely make use of 8 gigabytes of VRAM, AMD has the incentive to convince developers that they need to be doing it. And it's highly unlikely that Nvidia will disagree because they also want people to upgrade to 1070s and 1080s. So for me altogether, the 8 gigabytes of VRAM is a smart option, but we shall see. To be frank, we shouldn't even be having this discussion because the RX 480 should have been a lot faster, especially in DX12 games. The good thing about that, however, is we now have almost GTX 980 equaling performance around the $200 to $250 mark. So no matter which one of these cars you choose, you are getting incredible performance for the money you are spending. I feel that both cards should be around $200, as I consider both effectively on equal terms. The last thing I'm going to talk about, no SLI bridge on the 1060. Obviously, the RX 480 does. And you also need to consider the impact of FreeSync against G-Sync. It's just these little things that make the RX 480 the better choice for me. But if I was, say, building a smaller PC, a home theater PC, something with a small chassis, then I would likely take this GTX 1060 instead, mostly for the power and the temperatures. But once again, let's wait on the custom cards before we really make up our minds on that one. I'll catch you later, guys.